Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating this Crystal Spheres project. So the idea here is to see what we can do in terms of creating 3D looking crystal spheres without actually using any 3D. So there's quite a bit to do, so let's jump in and get started. So I've got a new project here, it's 1920 1080, 24 frames a second, and I've made it 15 seconds long. And let me come back to the file browser. And now what I've done is I've made a package of textures for you to use in this project and I'll give you a download link in the comments. So the first thing we want to do is to look for background composite, bg.composite, and we'll import that. And then we'll make a duplicate of it. So we'll right click and duplicate and we'll just hide the duplicate for the time being. Let's select this layer here, come over to the inspector, properties, and let's set the scale to 825 and 12 open the position here set the y position to minus 300 and the z position to minus 15,000 and the reason for this is we want to have the mountains away off in the distance okay so now let's come back to the file browser and let's grab the image called sand and let's bring it in just above the background composite and let's come to the inspector. Come to its properties. We want to set a Y position of minus 400 and a Z position of minus 2000. We'll come down and rotate it through 90 degrees on X. And then we will set the scale to 200%. Next, we're going to duplicate that sand. So right click, duplicate come back to its properties. We're going to set the Z position to minus 10500, minus 10,500. And we will increase the X scale to 400% and the Y scale to 225. And I'm just going to rotate it through 180 on Z so the seam matches up better where they join. Now I just want to alert you to the fact that this floor is not going to look quite the same as we go through the tutorial and that's because when I initially began it I was doing something much more complicated that I thought was quite clever and it wasn't clever at all. So you'll see some strange artifacts on the floor so just ignore those. Okay so now I want to add a camera so I'm going to come to object new camera and switch everything to 3D and all of a sudden my background mountains disappear and the reason for that is the camera's far plane defaults to 10,000 pixels and we're way back behind that so I'm going to set that far plane to 25,000 pixels just to be super safe and you can see my mountains reappear. Then I'm going to come to the camera properties and I just want to set up a quick animation so I'm going to click on the X position add parameter behavior oscillate and I'm going to set an amplitude of 540 and you'll see that, that just sort of swings us backwards and forwards like that. So now let's move on and create our sphere. So let's come to our file browser and look for the texture called glass and bring it into a new group at the top there. Let's come to the inspector properties just set that scale to 100%. I'm just going to turn off the camera, click on its tick box, just so we can construct this in the center of the screen. And then I'm going to take that glass and I'm going to make a new group of it. So right click, group, and I want to make sure this group is 2D. So right click, untick, 3D group. And then I want to set this group to fixed resolution by clicking on the fixed resolution box there. Then I'm going to come to the library and I'm going to look for filters, distortion, and I'm going to come down and look for sphere and I'm going to apply that to that group. 
Then I'm going to select the group, come to the inspector, properties, blend mode, and I'll set that to screen. Now, if I turn back on my camera, you'll see that that just looks like a flat object. And we're not sort of seeing round the sides of it as the camera moves left and right. So what we're going to do is we're going to link the glass to the camera movement. So we're going to select the glass and we're going to click on the X position, add parameter behavior link. And we'll drag the camera into the source object well. And what we want to do is set our scale here to minus 0.125. And now you'll see that's just a little bit more convincing because as we move right, we're seeing more of the left hand side. And as we move left, we see more of the right hand side. So this is the front face of our sphere. Let's very quickly set the blend mode to screen. What we need is a back face. And to do that, let's duplicate this layer. So right click, duplicate. And I'm going to come to object, send backward, just so to move that behind our foreground layer. And then I'm going to come to the behaviors to adjust that link and set that scale to 0.125, so plus 125. So it's moving in the opposite direction. And now if you press play, you can see that those two planes are moving opposite to each other. What I might just do is come to the properties transform for this back layer, and I'll just flip it on Y. So enter a Y value of 180 degrees rotation. And now we've got a slightly more interesting result. Now in this particular project, we're not going to be moving the camera vertically. We're just going to be moving on the X and the Z axis. But if we wanted to move it vertically, we would also link up the Y position to the camera in the exact same way. So we'd click on the Y position, add parameter behavior, link, add it to the camera, and we'd again set that value to 0.12 and so on and do the same with the other layer but have a negative value. In this case, we're, we're just going to ignore that. I'm going to delete that out of there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Y position here to just give us a bit more variation. So if you notice, I can now drag that Y value and we get a more interesting result. It doesn't look quite so mirrored. Then what we can do is we can come to the library, filters, color correction, grab a levels filter, and we'll apply that to that 2D group above the sphere. Come to the inspector, just slightly crunch down the black, and we'll take the white out and reduce that a bit as well. So just getting a little bit more see-through, something like that. We can adjust all this later on. And you can see that's already starting to look a little bit more 3D. So while we're in this group, I just want to come back to the file browser and I want to look for my particles mov. And I'm going to drag that in to this group just between those two glass layers. And I'm going to come to the inspector, properties, and I'm going to set the blend mode of this to add. And that will just give me these particles fizzing around inside the sphere. And this is something I just created using um, a motion particle emitter. OK, so next I want to add a light. So I'm going to come to Object, New Light. And first of all, I want to eliminate the background composite from the illumination. So I'm going to select the background composite layer, come to its properties, come down to Lighting. And under Shading, I'm going to turn that off. and that turns back on my mountains and they're not affected by the light. So let's come back to the light itself. Let's set a Z position of 1000. Let's set an X position of 150 and a Y position of 150. Just move it up to that top corner of the object. Then I'm going to select the group. So that's the sphere group, the 2D group. 
and here under its lighting tab I'm going to select highlights turn that on and I'm going to increase the shininess all the way up it just adds a little bit more shininess then I'm going to call this 3d group sphere and let's just close it down and let's tidy things up a bit more by calling this bottom group backing okay if you remember we created a duplicate of the background and I'm now going to drag that out of there into a new group and I'm going to turn it on and this group I'm going to call refract and I just want to move it down below the sphere so I'm going to select object send backward and send backward and it's now below the sphere and I just want to come down to its lighting here for that group shading and set that to off so what I want to do with this is to use it to create refraction and refraction is what happens when light passes through glass or crystal or whatever and what it does is it bends the and deforms the background image as the light rays pass through the glass and get deflected okay so how are we going to do that okay so the first step is I want to make a new group out of this background layer so I'm going to right click group and I want to make that 2d and I also want to take the main refract group right click on it add image mask just going to open up that sphere and I'm going to use that 2d group inside of it and drag that into the mask source well and I want to turn that group back on again so now I want to select the 2d group I want to set it to fixed resolution I want to come to the library filters distortion and I want to look for bulge and I'm going to apply it to the layer inside that 2d group I'm going to come to the inspector and I'm going to set the bulge scale to 3.5 Let's have a look how that plays. So that's not looking right yet because again it's not interacting correctly with the camera. So to fix that we are going to link the bulge center to the camera. So I'm going to click on that X center value, add parameter behavior link and I'm going to drag the camera into the source object well and here under source parameter I'm going to set it to properties transform position X and what I need to do is I need to set up my scale and offset for this link behavior so I'm going to set a scale of minus 0.25 and an X offset of minus 3840 so that's twice 1920 if you're wondering where that number comes from okay so now let's play and you'll see that that's looking already slightly better you can see how it's being bent around using that bulge and it's moving correctly in relation to the camera well, when I say correctly this is obviously all a simulation and um, it's not physically correct but it, it sort of emulates what would happen in the real world okay let me just call this group bulge and I want to make a group out of that group so I'm going to right click group again I want to make sure that's 2d so right click turn off 3d and this one I'm going to call sphere and I'm going to make sure that's also set to fixed resolution and I'm going to come to the library filters distortion and I'm going to come down and look for that sphere filter and add that to this new group and now if we play you can see we're getting a much nicer result just want to adjust my glass group so it's looking a little bit more see-through so I'm going to select the levels and let's just grab the gamma and increase that and you can see as I do so that just makes it all a little bit more see-through maybe crunch the whites down a bit something like that if we press play you can see that's looking more glassy and see-through okay so there's one other trick I want to try with this refraction group let's close up that sphere group 
I want to come to that bulge group, select the background composite layer, come to the library, come to filters, distortion, and I'm going to look for glass distortion. And I'm going to drag it onto that layer just above the bulge. And I'm going to come to the library, content. I'm going to click in the search box here and I'm going to type travert teen and I'm going to bring it in to this refract group. I'll bring it in at the top there. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to just turn it straight off and then I'm going to select the glass distortion filter, come to the inspector, grab the travertine and drag it into the distortion input source well. And you can see that that's immediately created quite an interesting effect of this fogged textured glass. It's all a bit too strong and that's not really the look I'm going for. So I'm going to select the travertine layer, come back to the library, come back to filters, clear that search result, come to color correction and look for levels and I'll apply it to the travertine. And I'll come to the inspector and I'm going to drag the black value, drag it all the way up. And as you see, as I do so, it just thins out that effect. So I'm just getting the just a little bit of, of texturing on that glass. Um, we could come back down to the glass distortion and maybe increase the softness value up to 2 or something like that just to soften it off even more. Not entirely convinced that I like this look. Um, I've left it in there just to show you what you can do. Uh, you might like that completely frosted look, for example. I think possibly for this scene it's probably best left off, but let's leave it there for now. OK, so because this refraction is distorting the background image quite a lot, I think what I want to do is I want to sharpen it up, because the refracted image tends to be very sharp. So I'm going to select that sphere group, I'm going to come to the library, filters, I'm going to scroll down to the sharpen group, and I'm going to look for unsharp mask and I'm going to add it to that group just above Sphere. And I'm going to come to the Inspector. Let's reduce the amount down to 0.5. So I think that just helps to keep the sharpness of the effect. OK, so there's just one other thing I'd like to point out about the refraction before we move on, and that's if you are wanting to move the camera vertically. You'll need to duplicate this uh, link on the bulge layer. So we'd come to the inspector, let's uh, right click, duplicate, and we'd need to swap out these values here. So the source parameter is going to be properties transform position Y, and it'll be filters bulge center Y. The scale we'll leave at minus 0.25. The Y offset would need to be minus 0.2160. And that's obviously twice 1080. And that'll move the refraction correctly in relation to a camera that moves vertically. But we're not going to be doing that, so I'm going to delete that. So let's close up that group and move on. And the next thing I want to do is to create some specular highlights. So I'm going to come to Object, New Group, and then I'm going to come over to the Library, look for Generators, and I'll look for Lens Flare, and I'll bring it into that group. I'll come to the Inspector, Properties, and we'll center it up, because don't forget the any object you bring in, if there's a camera, inherits the camera's current position. So let's center that up by hitting the Reset button. Then I'm going to come to this group that I've made, come down to the Lighting section here, and turn off Shading. Uh, and that means that the lighting doesn't interact with these lens flares, and they can be nice and bright. So I'm going to select the lens flare, I'm going to come over to the View menu and Show Overlays. And I'll come back to the Generator. And I'll come down here and select Adjust Item. And that now I can move the center of the lens flare up to around somewhere like this. I just want to increase the size to 150 and the intensity to 3. And I'll just increase the fall off to 5. Now you'll see that that lens flare is spreading out beyond the sphere itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the group, right click, add image mask, and 
Having done that, obviously it changes the blend mode of the group. So we need to come back to the group properties, set this to linear dodge. And then what we're going to do is select the image mask, open up that sphere group, use that 2D group and drag it into the image mask for our specular group. And that'll just limit the effect of the lens flare to this, this area. Let's call this group specular. So now I want to make a copy of this lens flare. So right click duplicate and we'll just move it down to the bottom left hand corner here. And let's reduce the size down quite a bit. This wants to be a fairly subtle one, about 20 will do, I think. In this case, I want to increase the streak intensity and I'll come up to about 0 0.4, 0 0.45, somewhere like that. And then I will duplicate this one more time. So let's right click, duplicate, and I'll grab it again and drag it up to the top right hand corner above the other one. Now I think I've made that main flare a little bit too strong. So let's select that, the bottom one there. Let's reduce the size, maybe down to 120 or even down to 100. And maybe let's reduce the intensity down to two. Yes, that's looking better. Okay, so you can see how much that's really improved the look of this. Now, if we press play, you'll see that, that doesn't really move quite correctly. So what I want to do is add a little bit of extra realism by having that track the camera movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the specular group, come to the properties. And again, I want to link the X position to the camera. So click here, add parameter behavior link and drag the camera into the source object well. And what I want to do in this case is apply it to properties transform rotation Z. And I'll come down here and set the scale to minus 0.125. And then I'll just rotate the X offset. So it's lining up with my sun over here. About 600 is doing that. And you can see that now rotates rather nicely and follows the angle of the sun. So that's really quite a nice interactive effect. Now there's another nice thing we can do to make this a little bit more photorealistic and that's to simulate the way this light would hit the floor because these are very bright and they would definitely hit the floor and interact with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that specular group, right click, duplicate and I'll call it specular floor and then what I'm going to do is come over to its properties and I'm going to set an X rotation of minus 90 and a Y position of minus 400. And what I want to do is I just want to turn off the image mask. So it's looking like that. And then I want to set the blend mode to add. And then let's reduce the opacity down to 50%. And now if we play you can see that that's hitting the floor and looking looking really quite nice. We might want to reduce that opacity down even more, probably down to about 30, so it's not too strong. Now, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I've been caught out by a really annoying feature of the image mask process. And that's that when you add an image to an image mask, it turns the source image off. So what's happened is that my sphere group has got turned off. Let me just turn that back on again. And you can see I've got my glass texture over the top. So let's close down sphere. Let's close down the specular and specular floor. And now let's look at another aspect of the sphere itself. So we've got refraction. We've got our nice specular effects. But what we haven't got is any reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my refract group and I'm going to duplicate it. So right click, duplicate. I'm going to drag it up to above the sphere there. And this I'm going to call reflection. Let's hold down the Alt key and open that up to reveal its entire contents. OK, we've got some stuff in here that we don't need. We don't need that travertine and we don't need that glass distortion uh, and we don't need the unsharp mask on the sphere. 
And we can also simplify this group structure a little bit by taking that background composite layer, dragging it out to the top layer of the reflection group and deleting these two groups that we're enclosing it. Right, how is this going to work? Well, first of all, we want to come to the bulge filter and we want to increase the amount to 350 and the scale I want to set to minus five. And this creates a very different sort of effect whereby we're pinching in the middle and bulging up the sides. Uh, I also want to come to the properties and increase the scale of this. So I'm going to come up to 140%. And then I also want to select the link behavior and make an adjustment to that. So I'm going to have a scale value of plus 0.125 and an X offset of 7680. And that's just limiting the movement of that fairly considerably. So it's being affected by the camera, but not, not greatly so. Okay, I just want to turn off the camera very briefly so we can add a mask to this. So I'm going to come down here, set, select the Circle Mask tool, hold down the Shift and Alt key, and from the center of the circle, I'm going to drag out a mask that's more or less the same size as my main sphere. And then I'll come over to its Transform and reset the position. And we just want to come to the Mask tab and invert it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the feather and I'm going to feather it inwards and probably stick it around 100, something like that. And then I also want to adjust the blend mode here. Let's set this to screen. And I want to set the blend mode of the reflection group to linear dodge. Let's turn the camera back on again and you'll see how that works. We're getting this fairly nice effect around the edges as though we're reflecting our environment. And I also wanted to make a duplicate of this background composite layer, so right click duplicate. I'm just going to come to the filter and just increase the scale up to 400. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that link behavior and delete it. So now let's just look at that one on its own. You'll see that's glued to the edges. It's quite a nice effect. So if we turn the other one back on again, we get that little animation of the reflection as well. So both those two together work pretty nicely. What we want to do is adjust the brightness of all this because we've gone a little bit crazy. So let's select the reflection group. Let's come to the library. Let's look for filters, color correction, and add a levels to that reflection main group and come to the inspector. Just want to grab the white out, bring that down a little bit and then I also want to increase the gamma just so that's a little, a little bit more see-through and maybe also just increase the punchiness of the white and I think that's looking quite nice. Okay, I also want to have the effect of this really bright reflection interacting with the floor in the same way as we did with our little um, specular highlights. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, I need to do a little bit of tidying up of the image mask. At the moment, that uh, sphere image mask is applying to the entire reflection group. And I want it to apply to each of these two layers. So I'm going to move it on to the topmost layer there. And then I want to set the mask blend mode to subtract and I want to invert it. And then I want to hold down the Alt key and I want to drag it onto the other background composite layer there. So they're both now having that mask applied. Then what I can do is I can take that reflection group and hit K to make a clone. And this makes a new group. I'm going to call this new group Caustics. And I want to come down and look for the anchor point tool. Come to view show overlays. And then I want to move that anchor point down to the bottom of the sphere, just around about there, value of about minus 400. And then I want to come to the X rotation, set that to 90 degrees. And you'll see that that is now sitting 
on the floor. Turn off the overlays just so we can see that a bit more clearly. I think what we want to do is set the blend mode of this group to screen just to fade it off a bit more and let's set the opacity down to 40% so it's fairly subtle. And you can see how that adds quite a nice effect. Now it's not quite linking up with the light direction so let's fix that. What we'll do is we'll come to the Z rotation and again we'll link it up to the camera so add parameter behavior link and we'll grab the camera drag it into the source well set the source parameter to properties transform position X and I want to set a scale of 0.1 and as an X offset of 1280 and that'll just line it up a bit more and it'll follow the path of the light a little bit more satisfactorily okay next thing I want to do is uh, let's just close up some of these groups. Let's close up caustics and reflection. And again, I want to take that refract group and duplicate it. So right click, duplicate. And I'm going to call this group edge. And I'll move it up above everything, I think, like that. And let's hold down the Alt key and open it up to reveal its entire contents. Again, we've got far too much in there. Let's kill travertine and let's move the background composite layer out to the top and let's delete that group underneath and let's delete glass distortion as well. Okay, I'm going to turn off the camera again just to center everything up. I'm going to come down and select the circle mask tool. Again, hold down Shift and Alt and drag out a mask that's roughly the same size as my sphere. And come to its properties, transform position, hit the reset button. And come to the mask and we just need to invert it. Now what that's done is it's given us a very, very slight edge all around everything. Just like that. Just want to feather that mask, so let's go for a value of minus 24. And then let's come to its properties and just increase the scale of that just a little bit. Let's go for something like 102. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bulge filter and let's just play with the scale here. Let's go for minus 5 and let's increase the amount to 400. Then we want to come to the blend mode, the properties, blend mode, and let's set that to screen. And what that's done is just given us a little bit of a sense of the thickness of the walls of the sphere, because obviously it's a inside is just air, but the outside is glass. Let's maybe reduce the opacity down to about 90% just to soften off that effect. If I turn that on and off, you can see how that's again helped with that 3D feel. Right, let's close that group on down. Let's close down backing as well. We don't need to be seeing that at this point. And the final stage of our construction is to add some shadow detail so that this looks as though it's sitting on the floor a bit more convincingly. So then we're going to come to Object New Group and we'll call this New Group Shadow. And let's move it down behind everything, just above the backing. Okay, let's turn off the camera just so we can be in the center. Let's come down and select the circle tool. Come to window show HUD. Click on the fill color. Click on the eyeglass. And let's select a dark color off that foreground, the darkest color off this floor here. And now let's hold down the Shift and Alt key. Let's drag out a circle that's the same size as our sphere. And we'll come over to the Transform and reset that. Uh, don't forget this is behind everything which is uh, why it's disappeared. What we're going to do is come to the Shape tab and we're going to set a feather of minus 385. Then we're going to come to its Properties set a Y position of minus 399 and 
an X rotation of 90. And you'll see that that's popped that down there at the base of the sphere. And that's creating that occlusion effect of it just touching the floor. We could increase that if we wanted by duplicating this. So right click, duplicate, and that just slightly darkens it down and come to the properties and reduce the scale down to 50%. Just added a little bit more darkness there. Let's now also duplicate that bottom circle. Right click, duplicate, because what we want is to have a shadow that's been cast by the sun here and is stretching out towards us. So let's call this shadow floor. I want to come to its properties I want to increase the Y scale to 250. Come back to the Shape tab, Style, and here where it says Fill Mode, I want to select Gradient. And then let's open up the Gradient Editor. Let's just set the start and end points for the gradient. So the Y start is going to be minus 10, and the Y end is going to be minus 385. And let's set the feather to minus 70. Now we need to adjust these colors, obviously. Let's remove the left-hand color. Let's click on the right-hand color. Again, let's click on the color swatch and let's pick our dark color off the floor like that. Let's set a new opacity tab and move it all the way to the right. Let's click on the left-hand opacity tab. I want an opacity of 50%. Then I want to click on the right hand opacity tab and set the value to 25%. And that's going to create a bit of a fade off of that shadow. Now let's come to its properties, transform, and let's set the anchor point to minus 385. And then let's set the blend mode to multiply. If I turn that shadow on and off, you can see that it's now pointing towards us. If I turn the camera back on again, you can probably just about see the effect that it's having. Well, the camera is a little bit close to our subject, so let's actually move it a little bit of way so we can see what's going on a bit better. And if we come back to here, you can see that shadow much more clearly extending towards us. Now, again, it's not tracking the position of the light, so let's again add a link behavior to it and we need to link its Z rotation. Click on the Z rotation, add parameter behavior link, and link that to the camera. And set the source parameter to properties transform position X. We need to set the link scale to 0.1. And let's again set the X offset to 1280. And that's now going to track the movement of the light rather nicely. If we look at that. That definitely looks as though it's being lit from the sun over there. OK, so our final step is going to be to add in the two other instances of the sphere and set up a camera move. I'm going to take everything from edge down to shadow, and that includes that light. And then I'm going to come to object, group, and group them together. And then I'm going to call this one center, because it's going to be the one that's in the center of the scene. And you might find something that I found, which is that the specular floor link offset needed to be adjusted once I'd made the group. And the same thing with the caustics link also needed to be adjusted. That used to be minus 600. I've now had to enter a value of minus 3480. Uh, I'm sure there's a very good reason for that. I can't quite get my head around it. And I won't waste your time on that now. OK, so we've got our center group. Let's close that up. And let's right click and let's duplicate. And let's call this one left. And then I want to come to its properties. Let's set an X position of minus 1600 and a Z position of minus 2500. I'll push it back way back into the back of the scene. Then let's duplicate this left-hand instance. So right-click, duplicate. Let's call this right. 
and come to its properties. And this time we're going to set an X position of 1500 and leave the Z position at minus 2500. Now these instances are all identical and we don't really want that. First of all, we need to fix the refraction for uh, the left and the right so that it more accurately reflects what the background is doing at that position. So let's open up the left hand group. Let's look for the refraction group and let's alt click it to open up all of its elements. And let's select this bulge group there. So that's the one that's containing the bottom layer. And let's enter an X position for this group of plus 350. And you'll notice that that now moves that refracted image over and that's looking much more plausible. So let's do the same thing with the right. So close that up, open up the right group, look for refract, uh, alt click that to open it up. And let's look for the bulge group there. And let's just do the opposite. So have a X position of minus 350. And that's already given us a very different look for both sides. Another thing we should look at is the specular offset. So if we look at the right hand instance, you can see that that's not lining up with our sun correctly. So let's open up the right hand instance. Let's look for the specular group, open that up and let's select that link and then adjust the X offset till it lines up with the sun like that. Could do the same with the left hand one, but I think that's not looking too bad. Probably also want to, if we're really getting picky, align these floor highlights. But I think what we'll do is just generally with those is to reduce them down a lot. So let's select that specular group and let's reduce the opacity of that specular floor group down to 10, I think. Just wants to be very subtle. Let's do the same thing with the left. So as our specular floor group is there, reduce that down to 10. And I think what we might also do is this caustic layer is too bright as well for that background. So let's reduce that down to 10 as well and come over to the right and do the same thing. Reduce that down to 10. So that's all just sitting in a little bit better. Another thing I'd like to do is adjust the lighting of those background spheres. So I'm going to type in the search field down here, light, and that brings up the three lights. I'm going to select the light in the left group, come to the light tab, and I'll increase the fall off to 6%. And I'll do the same with the right and increase the fall off to 5% in that case. And that just localizes the light a little bit more around the area of the sphere. So another thing I'd like to do is add some atmosphere to this scene. So let's close up those groups which have opened themselves up again. Um, and we're going to go do that by coming up to the top here, object, new group, come to the library, come to generators and we'll look for clouds and we'll bring it into that group. So let's come over to the inspector. Let's set the width to 3840 and the height to 2160. Let's turn open the gradient. Let's remove the black color tab. Let's set a new opacity tab on the top there. Drag it all the way to the right. Click on the left hand opacity tab and set that down to zero. Let's open up the offset here. Click on the X offset, add parameter behavior rate and we're going to enter a rate of minus 0 0.03. Just move it very gently left to right. Then let's click on the properties tab, come down to the blending opacity and set that down to 40%. And this I want to be running along the floor. First of all, I'm going to zero out the position and then I'm going to set an X rotation of 90 degrees. And I just want to bring it down to minus 396 on Y. And let's scale everything up to 300%. So it's covering the area of the floor. 
Then I want to duplicate this layer. Right click, duplicate, and come to its properties. In this instance, I want it to be running vertically in the background there. So let's zero out that X rotation. Let's set a Z value of minus 3000. Just going to move it back into the distance there and a Y position of 250. And let's set the opacity to 10%. And we'll also come to its rate and we'll reduce that down even further to minus 0 0.05. So that's really drifting very slowly in the background there. So let's rename this group clouds and close it on down. And let's have a look at animating our camera. So select the camera Let's turn off the oscillate behavior. And before that, I just need to make sure that I've got my layers in the right order. So I want the center to be above the other two. So I'm just going to move it, move it above the right hand sphere there. So it's at the top. OK, so now let's select our camera and let's look at sorting out our animation. So first of all, let's come to the first frame. Let's set an X keyframe and a Z keyframe for the position. And I'm going to enter an X value of minus 1450 and a Z value of minus 3500. And then I'm going to come to 7 seconds and 12 frames on the timeline. So that's the middle of the animation. And I'm going to set an X keyframe of minus 150 and a Z keyframe of 500. And then let's come to the last frame. And let's set an X position of 1600 and a Z position of minus 3500, which will zoom us back into the final orb. Then what we want to do is come to Window, Keyframe Editor. And we want to make sure that animated is selected here. So that'll show us the camera's keyframes. And if I hold down the Alt key and I click on the transform position Z here, that will solo this curve. Just while I make some adjustments, I'm going to turn off the spheres. So turn those off, turn off their visibility, just so we can move a little bit quicker. So I'm going to select that center keyframe and I'm going to drag its Bezier handle just so it's leveled up. And then I'm going to come to the first keyframe and I'm going to drag that keyframe handle just above the curve and come to the last one and do the same, just drag it above the curve. Then I'm going to Alt click on the X position and to solo this curve as well. And I'm going to select that center keyframe. And again, I just want to even out that center position. So we have a little bit of a hold in the middle. So I'm going to drag these keyframes out. So the handles are more or less even and relatively flat. And just adjust those keyframes at the beginning and end. So drag that handle just a little bit above the curve and drag that handle just a little bit below the curve. OK, so now let's turn back on our, our spheres and have a RAM preview and see how that looks. So here we go. We're zooming out from the first one, center one appears, track across and we see the other one. And slowly we start to zoom back in again to the final position. Sorry, that RAM preview is slowing down a bit. So I mentioned at the beginning that I'd made a bit of a mess of the floor and the floor we've been looking at throughout the tutorial is not the correct one. I just want to make a little bit of an adjustment now where we finished the scene and I want to put a light right at the back of the scene here just to look like it's coming down between those mountains. So I'm going to come to Object New Light and first of all I want to come to its Properties, Position and I'm going to set an X position of minus 500, a Y position of 500, and I want to push it a long way back to minus 12,000. So it's sitting way, way back at the back of the scene. And you can see how that's just giving me a little bit of illumination there between the, the mountains. 
and that's pretty nice. What it's also doing is making that distant floor look a little bit too speckly. So I'm going to select that sand copy, which is the version that's sitting right at the back there. I'm going to come to the library, filters, and I'm going to look for color correction, contrast, and apply it. Come to the inspector, and I'm just going to set a contrast value of 0.5. And that just reduces the speckliness there. It, looks, it makes it look a little bit more as though it belongs in the distance, not too much detail. Now, while we're talking about that, I want to advise you that when you come to render, it's very important to set the resolution to best. If you don't do that, then you'll get all sorts of aliasing on the floor as the camera moves around, and that looks really bad. So d definitely select best when you do that. And just one other thing before we go, I want to look at the clouds here, open that up. You remember there was a clouds layer that's running across the floor, and its Y value was set to minus 396. I think I just want to lift it up to minus 300. So it's sort of kind of sitting a little bit further above. And you can see the difference that makes if I go back to where we were. It, it looks a little bit too close to the floor. Minus 300, it looks a bit more plausible. And I also want to come to the generator controls here, and I want to set the height to 3840. So it's going back a bit further into the distance. Okay, so finally, let's look at this issue of where these spheres overlap with each other. So first of all, let's look at the left-hand sphere. So around about here, it's being overlapped by the foreground. To fix that, I'm going to make a duplicate of the left-hand group. So right-click, duplicate, and I'm going to move it up above the center there. And then I'm going to right-click, add image mask, and I'm going to use the center group as the source for the image mask. And then I need to remember to turn the center back on again. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the blend mode of this left copy group to screen and its opacity down to 50%. And what I also want to do is I want to come to the library, come to filters, distortion, and I want to look for bulge and I want to add it to that group. And if we turn on the overlays, I'm going to just bring the center of the bulge over till it's sitting roughly here. And I think this is probably enough just to sell the uh, effect. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, at this point, I'm kind of hitting the limits of what motion can manage. So I think that what I might do is just delete a few of the ingredients out of there. So I'm going to delete that specular floor, for example. Um, I don't need the caustics and I don't really need the shadow either. And most importantly, I do need to delete the light because that's adding extra illumination that we don't want. So let's delete that as well. Okay, so that's the basic principle of that. And it is going to start to slow your machine down a bit, but it's probably worth it just for the extra value that that gives. Okay, and we just need to do the same thing with the right hand side, find the point at which it overlaps. So we can take a call on this. So round about here, it's overlapping. I'm just going to call that left overlap and close that down. Uh, select the right hand group, right click duplicate. Again, let's move it above the center. Come to the inspector, properties, set the blend mode to screen, set the opacity down to 50% as we did before and then right click, add image mask, and we'll use the center, add it to the mask source well, turn the center back on again, and come to the library, filters distortion, grab the bulge, add it to the right hand group. Again, with the overlays on, let's move that over till it's somewhere around here. We just want it, in both instances, hanging off the edge of the frame doesn't have to be too accurate and we don't even really need to animate it. So let's just call that one right overlap. And we just need again to delete 
those unwanted elements from the group. So delete specular floor, delete caustics, let's delete shadow, and let's delete the light. So there you go, that is the project pretty much finished. So let's have a look at a final render. So there you go, it's been a very long project and uh, lots of elements to it. I hope it's been worth sticking with it. Thanks very much if you have, and I hope to see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching.